Hello everybody, this is Havoc. Welcome to another Ancient Empires battle. Today, I am playing the King of Pergamon. We are playing just a regular, good old-fashioned knockout, drag-out, custom battle. Nothing really too fancy. We decided just to play two factions that haven't really been covered at all. So today I'm playing as the Kingdom, or I guess not the Kingdom, just uh, the faction of Galatia. And of course the King of Pergamon is playing as none other than uh, Pergamon himself. So let's get down to army comps and then we'll get straight into the battle. I'm going to hit pause or otherwise the battle would start. Uh, so we're going to just do a real quick rundown. I have two sets of uh, horsemen that are going to be on each side. So I have two units of Galician Noble Horse from the late period, and then a unit of Galician Noble Horse from the early period. Same on the left side. A lot of these factions, uh, much like the 1212 AD mod, will have a late period or an early period, or for instance like the Roman Empire, or the Roman factions actually has the Roman Republic, which will be, of course, be pre-Caesar. And then you'll have the Roman Empire, which will be um, which will be post, or during and post-Caesar. And even in the post-Caesar, in the Roman Empire, you have three tiers of Roman legions that you can choose from. So it's just very interesting. It's very cool. I like the depth. That these, uh, that this mod offers because it is pretty pretty intense. All right, so let's keep on moving on. Over here on my left flank for my infantry, I have three units of Glacian Spearwall. These Glacian Spearwalls are actually pretty sweet. They're not n as good as pikemen, but they definitely will hold their own in battle, and they actually do pretty darn well in this battle too. And then on my right flank, I have three units of Glacian Noble Warband late. So, they're literally the Glacian Noble Horse. They're dismounted Glacian Noble Horsemen. This is pretty much what it is. Uh, supporting them are five units of Glacian Archer Militia. These guys are light bow, and uh, they're not actually going to do a whole lot. They're kind of more of a distraction. That's pretty much what I use these for. These guys look like prisoners. Just could be their outfits, but it just looks... That dude's sleepy. And it's like, try to keep your eyes open. Try to keep your eyes open. Anyways, uh, <laughs> behind them, we have uh, our general, the Galatian Guard Cav. I like, I like, just like the way that Galatia looks. They look obviously very, very barbaric, but at the same time, they're like really heavy, really good looking barbarians rather than just the standard old crappy barbarians and then last but not least I actually have a couple of units of warhounds these Glacian war dogs will uh, I've never used warhounds in battle before and so uh, you know we I didn't really expect them to do much I just had some extra funds left over but we'll see what they do in battle and I actually kind of really really like them all right get down to King of Pergamons and ironically enough we kinda had the same build when it comes to horsemen uh, he had two units of mercenary glacian riders and a unit excuse me of uh, Gima Cav and so that's what he's gonna have on his left flank and he's gonna have the exact same setup on his right flank I just thought that was funny as soon as I saw that I was like we have just the same Army set up book their tier threes, which tiers don't really matter at this point in time with the Ancient Empires mod, but he just had the same kind of horseman setup. I thought that was kind of funny. In his front line, he has a couple of allied Cretan archers and a unit of mercenary Rhodian slingers. Now, I actually am pretty impressed with the allied Cretan archers. They are decently armored. And they do fairly well in melee combat. It's not that easy to route these dudes. At least in the, the couple of battles that I played against them. So if you're going to be... If you have a faction that has allied Cretan archers, I would recommend using them because they're actually pretty stinking good. Manning his middle column in the front line, he has a couple unit of bronze shield pikemen. Now these bronze shield pikemen... I. I just love the way pikemen look. I miss that old school, just that old school 
bike line. I mean, just look at that. That's almost 3D. Like, I want to get, like, a 3D goggles and, uh, and, like, see if it trips me out or not. You know what I mean, man? But anyways, he has two units of those, and he has quite a few units of mercenary thoracotai. You can have one, two, three, four units of mercenary thoracotai. Now, these guys really aren't that bad. We're going to see how well they do in battle, but uh, they, they really kind of hold their own. It's just interesting having so many units of mercenaries. And then um, behind that, his main reserve force, he's going to have three units of Adelaide Royal Guard. I really like these Adelaide Royal Guard. Because uh, their, their uniforms look really, really sweet, and they're actually pretty stinking good in battle, I'm not going to lie. I just really like their uniforms, their shields, they look a, they're look they very, very organized. Whereas a lot of these units have mixed shields, which I don't have an issue with. I have not, I don't have any issues with mixed shield designs. I think that looks really cool and it adds a, a really good depth. It is really cool seeing the Adelaide Royal Guard all pretty much having the same exact setups. And then he has just a regular unit of mercenary Galatians. I think he just had some extra money left over. These guys are just mixed Galatians along with some fanatic looking dudes in there. And then he has a unit of mercenary Galatians as his general. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit play. We're still going to set up for just a little bit, but you'll see us get in battle uh, pretty darn quick. Hello, ponies. So this battle, this is the cobblestone map. This is the preset within Total War Attila. And uh, really nothing too fancy about this. We just wanted to play on a nice, flat, even playing field. And we're finally moving in. I do want to slow-mo this real quick, just because I like watching the the javelins get thrown in the side charge. It's a very glorious side charge. I like it. Very well done. Very well done. So I, I bring in my calf. These guys are actually going to get wrecked pretty stinking fast. Over there, we're doing pretty good. We're not moving our infantry right now. This is really kind of the beginning the beginning cav engagement stages that tend to happen with most battles so as you can see those Galatian noble horsemen they are routing and they are gone the same with one of his unit of mercenary Galatian riders in this game fatigue and morale matter way more than they did in any of the previous total wars and as you can see yep he's gonna route my unit of Galatian noble horse but we routed his unit of Gima Cav. And we're going to finally engage our Galatian Noble Horse to his mercenary Galatian Riders. And over here we've engaged on the other side as well. I will say that does look just the sense of scale with this game is really good. I love it a lot. Alright, so as you can see, we're going to lose that unit. Yep. So we've lost the entire right flank. Which really kind of sucks. I don't like losing all of my cav at all. And in this game, you can lose cav pretty darn quick. Now we did route his unit there, but uh, we got routed. So we're kind of doing a, mi a mix and match up there. It's going to be kind of hard to determine exactly if we're even going to win this cav engagement. Which is, again, very important for me. Uh, if I if I lose my cav, I tend to not do very well. But that side charge tends to route him and his other unit of mercenary Galatian riders are routing. So we have two units of cav that are left over to his one unit over on the right flank. So that does give us a very good advantage. We're going to move our war dogs over to potentially use them on these mercenary thoracotides. But we're going to really get to see these guys in battle right here in just a minute here we go sending those war dogs after this cav 
oddly enough, these war dogs, they are going to catch up to the cab. Oh, boo. Oh, boo. No, get away. Oh, shoot. I'm going to miss that charge. I thought they would zoom in on the puppies. Stupid insert button. But anyways, they are going to just absolutely be destroying this cab. I mean, look at that. They are getting wrecked. With very little to no casualties on our end. So we're actually going to route his unit of a Gima Cav. Or Mercenary Galatians, excuse me. So he has no Cav except for his general left. Which puts us in a very, very, very good situation. Now, his allied Cretan archers, this is why I'm saying use them. Because they're actually going to be pretty well. As you can see, just a couple of volleys are already starting to route my Galatian archer militia. And these guys are not very accurate at all. As you can see, the allied Cretan archers are actually decently accurate. My uh, Galatian militia archers are not very at all. And we're sending the puppies after the slingers. Oh, and they're just going to get wrecked. Get up, puppies. Get up. But anyways, yeah, these guys are actually doing pretty darn well. These Glacian War Dogs already have 84 kills. So you can see those guys aren't going to have very many. Our Cav are actually doing quite spectacular as well. And yeah, we're just going to kind of hound them a little bit. We were trying to basically just provide some cover. And they left, he left his cat, his... Uh, archers open so I feel like yep you leave these guys open against my war dogs and I will definitely I will definitely take them over attack puppies for being attacked by puppies they sure aren't screaming very much these guys are still rocking it they're doing a really good job I like I said I was really impressed with how efficient and how well the war dogs did because I didn't expect them to do anything. Now we're going to be sneaky sneaky. Move our cat to the back. <laughs> it wasn't really a sneaky move. There wasn't anything I was really trying to accomplish. I was just going to try and put some pressure on King of Pergamon's general. That was the main reason for doing that. Just to see if I could kind of get any kind of advantage on him. And now is kind of when the melee battle starts. So I'm going to bring in my German spear or Galatian spear wall over on this l on our left flank. And he's going to go after those mercenary Thoracotai. And then we're going to get this melee battle going on. Galatian warband going against these mercenaries. Our general coming over in to put a little more pressure on those Agima Cav. By the way, there is, what, a good, there were 7,992 units on the battlefield, so just shy of 8,000. Oh, there we go. Those heavy melee infantry throwing their pelums, that is going to cause the mercenary thoracotides to start wavering. But yeah, a little under 8,000 troops, so not one of the biggest battles that I've fought for sure, but it's still just a large, a large battle still. I mean, you're not going to... I don't know, I feel like there weren't huge, huge battles like that in Attila. And this just looks like a, it's going to be, like it is on a grander scale anyways. So I just I just really like how it looks. And he's going to charge his mercenary Thoracotides into my spear wall. Oh. And he's also going to bring his unit of bronze pikemen to potentially go up against me. All right, so we seem to be there's a lot more units on this left flank, but he's not really engaging them. So I'm actually just going to be able to just hold them with this unit of spear wall, 
and I'm bringing up my other two to kind of surround and entrap him. Now, I can't charge his general because he's got a unit of mercenary Galatians coming at me. I'm going to get close, though. And then my general's just going to chill there for a little bit. Galatian Noble War Banner finally going up against his Adelid Royal Guard. And this was my mistake, definitely. I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't really paying attention. But I'm just going to completely, completely leave my archers open. And he's going to do a really good job of maneuvering into that gap. Here we go. That's probably why I was hammering and anviling these mercenary Thoracotides. So we are going to get hit hard. And he is going to quick route two of my archer units. But bringing his general that deep into my territory has really hurt him. And I'm able to get a side charge off with my own general. And he's going to start losing units pretty fast with that. Now our spear wall is going to go up against his Adelaide Royal Guard. And we now have two units of Noble Warband available. Which from the looks of it I'm bringing back for some reason. Maybe not. No, I'm going to repurpose them. That's what's going to happen. And so his general... His general is losing the battle desperately. As you can see, there's blood all over him. Oh, my word. So much death. There's that invisible horseman again. He's invisible. And it looks like they are definitely routing. Turn around. Shoot the general. Shoot him. Cut him down. I don't remember if we were able... Yep, okay, good. So we did kill his general. That's going to be a morale debuff for him. Majorly. So what do I do? I'm realizing that I can really, really take him on now. So this is something else interesting about the Ancient Empires mod. And this is something that the devs have told me too. You always want to have units in reserve. You never want to have all of your units engaged at the same time I'm sure you know close post to the end of the battle it's gonna be like that but you really always wanna have a unit of reserves and so this is where the battle really turns in my favor if you're gonna notice right as soon as I engage these Adelaide Royal Guard he literally let's go tactical map he literally will have every unit engaged in battle All of his units are going to be occupied, minus his archer units. So what does that really do? That allows me to have hammer and anvils all over the place. It's a freaking hammer and anvil part tay. And that's really going to hurt him, because I have three units of cav. He is going to break off his bronze shield pikemen, but breaking off of that engagement is going to give him... Yeah, it's going to hurt his morale really badly. And it's going to cause him to rout. That was his really best chance against my Cav. So, it's just hammer and anvil time. So much death. Look at that though, it's glorious. I love back charges into the enemy. They just look really good. I wish that Attila, or at least the moderators, could take the impact animations you know and integrate them into Attila it would make it from Warhammer it would make it so much more better can you imagine having those impact charges in this kind of a battle oh it'd be so great so he's gonna start chain riding over here on the left flank but his right flanks actually holding out pretty well holding out pretty stinking well so if we can get this unit a bronze shield pikeman to be engaged in battle on the front and try and get a charge into the back that'd probably be pretty well pretty good for us but as you can see this unit of Adelaide Royal Guard are going to start routing I'm starting to bring all of my other troops along and it's just gonna be too much those other two units are gonna start wavering they're gonna start wavering and it's the end of the battle let's go ahead and hit that end replay decisive victory 
So you see I deployed 3,970. He deployed, what, 52 units more? But uh, definitely, definitely got our archers wrecked. And our, our cav on that right flank really got wrecked fast, too. But I think the real heroes of the battle were our, our two units of Galatian War Dogs. 296 kills and 246 kills. And then the general next up. And then I guess this unit of Noble Horse. Having that hammer and anvil really, really, really put us into the victory. So cav engagements. I'm not saying that cav are absolutely crucial. But in any case, if you have cav where the enemy does not, you're going to have a very distinct advantage because you have a lot of a quick movement speed that you're able to deal with. Over here, he didn't do too bad, uh, King of Pergamon. He got a lot of kills with his general before he died. His mercenary Therakotai did pretty good. His bronze sh shield pikemen just really weren't able to get into the battle and do a whole lot. But his mercenary Galatian riders and his horsemen did really good as well. Obviously, they rotted my entire right flank. So, guys, that will be the end of the battle. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button. And uh, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. There will be more Ancient Empires videos coming out in the future. I'm going to kind of ramp them up in anticipation for their release. The devs have asked me to do some things, and I'm more than happy to oblige. Uh, so yeah, be on the lookout for more of that kind of stuff. Otherwise, guys, this is Havoc, and I am out of here. Peace!